And here we go for game three, the last game on Saturday at Beachhead 2023. And here are some Mycerians. I think these guys normally play as the elite warriors. They're green painted to distinguish them from um, the normal guys who are in, I think, in blue with red shields. Um, that's always the way in the ancient world people distinguish their elite troops from um, their other ones. A slightly fancier uniform and a slightly different set of colours on the shield so they can be seen from three foot ranges, I guess. But into this third game, um, the, the Saturday afternoon game, and this is the setup. You can see my army over here. We've got a couple of fields on the table, a, a bit of rough terrain. This may have been possibly it's even a plantation. I'm, I'm not quite sure what that might have been. But over here, we've got a really Ian Speed's fabulously painted LMIS army. And the good news is you're going to be seeing a lot more close up photos of these things as the game goes on. Um, what have I done here? with the army well as usual the two the tiny command of heavy chariots is in the middle um i've got the bigger command with the medium foot it looks like shooters here cavalry the javelinmen kind of rushing into this area and a few cavalry kind of lurking around the end i have a suspicion this command would have gone down last which means my heavy infantry are, are just sort of on the edge of this dodgy terrain ready to rush out here and um Ian's Elamites have got an awful lot of shooting, but not necessarily of the best quality. There's a, what is probably, maybe it's an ally, I'm not entirely sure. There's a load of camels in the middle. There's a load of um, chariot type things either side, all putting out shooting. There's a load of mediocre bowmen. And the most important thing is, there's a hell of a lot of it. This, for my tiny, compact, high quality army, is a real matchup of, of quality versus quantity and, um, and seeing how the rules kind of pan out for that. So let's have a look in more detail at what's in Ian's army here. So you've got a couple of light foot bow, two bowmen, four more light chariots. So we're already up to eight shooters there, two poor javelin and lurk at the back, evade a bit, 10 shooting things in that first command. Um, yeah, it is a Bedouin ally. You've got Mediocre camels, um, you've got some tethered camels, which are high, acting as stakes for the mediocre bowmen. Um, another light camel bow mediocre. Those guys don't shoot, I think, which is a bit unusual, but everything else is doing a slinger and a bowman. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We're already up to 21, which is um, pretty much more than my, my entire army. And then pretty much a sort of mirror-ish of the first one. Light chariots with bow, couple more bowmen, the two crap javelin men and a lot of um, light foot to screen them and a light horse bow mode mediocre. So we had 21, we got another 4, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, of which 30 put out some form of shooting. So this really is gonna be shields held high, barrel in, try and take out the shooting and, and chew up these iffy quality guys um, before they just swamp my much, much smaller army. So this is kind of what happens to start with. You can see my heavy foot, um, the couple of elite guys with their big shields, very proof against shooting, being elite, being armoured, being heavy infantry. Their their minimum score is going to be effectively four. Um, one on the dice rolled up to two for being elite um, and a protection factor of two for being armoured heavy infantry. So any bowman shooting them is going to be need to get five or six um, on the dice to do that or gang up on shooting. I've got my other heavy infantry shooters here trying to sort of deal with the camels or the chariots. And these guys, my, my strike troops, really don't want to be taking on the camels. That neutralizes a lot of their benefits by, by scaring them, by spooking them with camels. I want to play them with infantry, really. And they're coming over here to help whatever stuff I've got here to try and plow into these chariots. Um, in version four of ADLG, it's much more of an even match between light and heavy chariots. That's It's a subtle difference. It's not a dramatic difference anymore, which is kind of interesting. But, but these guys want to be running over something squishy these guys want to be soaking up a lot of the shooting and then over on um, on the other side where where bizarrely surprisingly this enormous army sort of thins out a bit with with a few chariots and bowmen i've got all my medium foot shooters the swordsmen the elite um, heavy cavalry the normal heavy cavalry ready to kind of put pressure on on this army on what's still a pretty open table because a lot of that 30 strong is actually in light foot or in in second string troops like those javelin men so it's not quite as wide as it looks. There's um, there's a lot of stuff that shoots. There's a lot of stuff to swamp you, but but not a lot to actually stand up and go toe to toe to fight, um, which is what I'm trying to look to do. So here you've got over on this very right hand side. I think you saw a deployment. These couple of cavalry, they've um, they've been blocked by these um, quite remarkably painted um, light light cavalry who've just come rushing forwards just to try and slow them down, protect this wing of the army while it gets up and starts to do some shooting, but. 
my javelin men, my slingers, these cavalry are, are sort of ganging up on them. And I'm, I'm already thinking I've just got to kill as much as I can as quickly. And, and this counts as well as anything else. If I can gang up shooting on it, not only does it open this whole flank, but but it's just knocking one more thing down before we get to combat. So here we are into the middle. Um, it looks like the camels have kind of drifted across as well. And these chariots have, have come up. And this this command, well, two commands, really, the chariots and the heavy infantry are starting to realize they've got a lot of the enemy army to sort of soak up and cover. So actually, this main command with the, the big guy has split up. I'm just sending this up as kind of a, you know, they're just going to be an arrow magnet, really. But as long as they can take the arrows and, and give some chance for the heavy chariots to come in, that's an extra bit of poke. My cavalry here are coming up with chariot as well this lot are going to drift over here so it's really using all these heavy infantry to soak up shooting from the enemy and let these troops chew in on the other end maybe let this lot punch through here and, and build a really really strong formation here whilst the the elamites um, and their bedouin allies are just kind of lining up and waiting to to start loosing arrows at me so here we go um we've got a kind of slightly lopsided view here but you can see very much as um well, almost as Barker intended, my army's lined up. Um, they've got some bowmen holding back here. It allows me to put quite a lot of pressure. Their bowmen don't really even want to mix it with my mixed shooters. All these mounted troops in the middle, the chariots, the camels, they want to get into my chariots. They don't really want to get into my heavy infantry at all. Um, we're starting to take a few shooting hits. We're starting to dish out a few shooting hits. But this sort of squishy stuff, I've because there's not much terrain on table, there's nothing really for these bowmen to hide. They are going to sort of have to tough it out and potentially my cavalry can come racing in here and, and run them out as long as these camels don't get out too far to the side to neutralize them. So so here we're getting kind of a bit closer. You can see my guys are holding the shields up. They're getting in. They're really, really, really taking some shooting. The enemy chariots have moved to the top of a hill here. Give them an extra advantage. They can sort of stay there and shoot. I'm going to have to do something about that. I can't just sit there and and be shot up tough as these guys are and you know the more chances of shooting the more chance of a bit of luck these supposedly bomb proof bulletproof guys the elite the armored have taken two hits that's a yellow marker but here i'm looking at go well is there a potential with the cavalry which are just off screen at running down the javelin and the bowman with this chariot and what's these sort of spearmen occupy it but again that thing where i've had to spread out and leave gaps in my line just to get these infantry covering a frontage of much wider than they are so it's five infantry covering sort of set one two three four five six seven covering eight really they're they're gonna they're so tough against the camels in combat they can probably afford to give away overlaps that just gives them a bit bit more coverage but but if the camels come through it's a sort of command and control challenge for the um the bedouin and the elamite there's not much in the way of generals here it's it's a big army but it is unwieldy their generals are not particularly good quality so interesting kind of dynamic there between the two and um over on over on the right hand side you see my medium shooters my cavalry we've swept those light horse away and we've come powering in managed to sort of slam into some of those bowmen and, and those javelin men on the other side it looks like we've knocked a couple away these are hit markers i'm presuming there was a bowman there who's dead and, and caused casualties there my archers are concentrating here so this suddenly looks like a pretty weak tricky um area for them because just because of this combination of shooting and, and better quality troops and without the camels to disrupt it not too much happening either there the, you know the enormous army is slightly run out of table to expand into so here we go this is kind of looks sort of good sort of crazy it's um some of my heavy infantry have just piled into the camels um the camels are not great i think they're mediocre um but what i've done there as well put these guys at risk two overlaps is always bad um but it does take out one two three shooters it really reduces the the amount of shooting that these guys put out and it potentially allows the rest of the army to get closer without taking too much for pounding the cavalry here are, are getting a bit closer getting closer to these squishy javelin men and squishy bowmen on this flank and um, anyway camels are base factor zero against heavy infantry even with two overlaps that puts them up to two they're mediocre my infantry are base factor one so it's only two one they're mediocre and it looks like i've done some damage there and these camels have also taken some shooting from my mixed shooters as well who can now start the trade trade shots here and um, yep look at the guys over there amazing stuff and um here we go we've got some of the um the guys on the back of one of the chariots this is um have you ever seen that toes there's actually even one two three four five 
and then the bottom of the foot. There's even the right number of toes, never mind the fact they're damn toes painted on it. You can really, really see that painting coming up well as, as those chariots start to run away or fall back over on the, what looks like from the camp being in the middle, over on that right flank where my cavalry are putting thresh pressure. You can even see sort of the three layer um, dark brown, pink and, and pale pink, even going down to almost the toe level. Um, quite, quite spectacular. But here, let's flip over to the other flank. Much as I'd said might happen, these guys got stuck in, tied up the camels. That's allowed my heavy chariots and my cavalry just to come piling into those bow and javelin men. Um, the javelin men, I guess, could have evaded, but they were probably at risk of getting caught. And now these really powerful troops, great at running down these um, these sorts of troops, have, have managed to get into them and avoid the camels that because they've been sort of tied up by that. This guy's still a little bit too close to the camel for comfort, but he's not fighting the camel. So let's see what happens here if they do manage to get a breakthrough against them. Um, again, more of these kind of remarkably painted guys. So what's happening here? Super bravery, really. My guys have um, been shooting up the hill, piled up the hill. The chariot's gone up the hill. You can see the heavy infantry have just got their shields up and charged home, driving some of those um, guys away to evade, beating some of the other ones up. And, um, you know, these guys, uh, the enemy are but numerous but they're just not that great in combat they have to do a lot of damage shooting and then kind of get lucky in the combat but that's not quite happening and we're just piling up this really dense kind of i don't know rugby mall i think would probably be the thing to to stick the shields up pile down the middle get into close to close combat do some real damage to them um, with swords and spears once um, they, the elamites the bedouin they really don't like fighting they want to shoot and scoot and um and over on this open flank Looks like these bowmen are still actually holding up. They, they really should be toast by now. But I've managed to bring the rest of the cavalry and those javelin men who were shooting up the light horse right at the beginning of the game over to threaten these javelin men. There's a lot of little bits who are starting to take casualties, starting to take hits on the brink of death as well. So this is a little bit scattered now. Um, these guys are holding up remarkably well, but that can, can't go on forever. And um, flip back to the other side now. You can see the chariot that's got severe hits on those guys the cavalry have broken through they're holding up here but this is starting to look like a big hole there's a lot of red markers behind there as these guys do start to struggle and start to wilt so the wings of the army are, are folding and um <coughs> no excuse me and yeah here it is that's just as we saw there was a lot of red markers a lot of people very close to death there and seconds later they're all kind of gone there's only the one javelin and these guys have just completely crumpled over here freeing up my army to kind of suddenly wheel around into the middle where where the powerful camels have just been occupied by my chariots they were occupied by the infantry looks like they've finally beaten it there but they've they've got drawn into a kind of protracted scrap which has allowed my really powerful troops to run over the really really squishy stuff um, and to get into it before it's managed to do too much damage with shooting over on the other side finally those bowmen go looks like we've um scattered the javelin men come in as well still my inf infantry and my cavalry are doing a lot of combined shooting now that we've driven away all the rest of it it's starting to add up quite severely for um for the elamite army and um with that the elamites collapsed to defeat and a, a win against a huge army for the assyrians <laughs>